Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. I hope everybody had a blessed weekend. If you're still here, the sound of my voice, glory be to God. You understand? One thing we're going to realize is some people didn't wake up this morning. Some people went to sleep and won't wake up to the judgment. That's it. You know, according to my Bible, there's no poor purgatory where you wait around. You rest. You understand? You know, and this is the scary part is, you know, God says like he's the beginning and the end and he knows everything. And this is the scary part about that. People like, do that people go to heaven right when they die? Well, according to the Bible, we rest. We rest with our ancestors. That's what according to the Bible it shows. I know the Bible says to be absent in the flesh, to be present with God, but you got to understand something. <laughs> that only applies to Christians <laughs> or believers who gave Jesus Christ their lives. That doesn't apply for everyone. But the scary part is like this. Who knows? You know, when you die, what if time just speed up and it's straight to the judgment? Because think about it, when you sleep, you don't know, you don't keep track of time. So, for those who are sleeping, and Christ is not sleeping in Christ, when they wake up, it's instant judgment day. And the thing is, they won't know how long much time has passed by. So, maybe it's true, if you look at it from that perspective. But it, it's still scary. <laughs> you understand? What goes on during the resting period? They never really go in detail in the Bible. What happens? But it seems like your soul is laid, is laid to rest. It's just resting, waiting for God to wake you up. <laughs> just like every morning. You woke up, right? So, give glory to God today. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, sometimes the past will give you answers to the present. That's why the Bible tells us to read these words to the next generation. Give them to your children too. Tell them the old stories. Tell them everything that's in here. But today I'm going to read from Judges. I'm just going to go with the flow today. I read this yesterday morning, and I kept it open there, and I feel like I need to read it again today. And I'm going to start from the beginning of the book of Judges. Now, I might slaughter some of these names in here, but bear with me. <laughs> now, remember, in the last book of Joshua, God made the children, I mean, God, through Joshua, placed a ultimatum mm -hmm. with the kid with the children of Israel choose now whom you may serve right choose now just remember that and they said the Lord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now remember when you give your life over to Jesus Christ that's basically what you're doing you're choosing whom you may serve now remember God is a jealous God Anyway, let's get to it. This might take a sec second, but I got a little time this morning. I got think I'm well rested. <laughs> First book of Judges. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said to Simeon, his brother, Come up with me unto my lot that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him, and Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew of them in Bezek 10,000 men. And they found Adani Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And Adani Bezek fled, and they pursued him after him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. 
And Adani Bezet said, Three score and ten kings, having their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table. As they have done, so God have required me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem, and had taken it, and smitten it with the edge of the sword, and set their city on fire. Now afterward the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites, that dwelt in the mountain, and in the south, and in the valley. And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before was Kajaf Arba, and they slew Shishai, and Ahaman, and Talmai. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Debar. And the name of Debar before was Kajaf Sefer. And Caleb said, He that said, Smiteth Kajaf Sefer, and taketh it, to him will I give Aksa my daughter to wife. And Othaniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, when she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted from off her ass, and Caleb said to her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me south land. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her to upper springs and the nether springs and the children of the Kenite Moses father-in-law went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah which lie in the south of Arad and they went and dwelt among the people and Judah went with Simeon his brother and they slew the Canaanites and that inhabited Zephyr and utterly destroyed it and the name of the city was called Hormah also Judah took Gaza with the coast there and Ashkelon, the coast thereof, and Ekron with the coast thereof. And the Lord was with Judah, and he drave out the inhabitants of the mountains, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, as Moses said, and he expelled hence the three sons of Anak. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. But the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem until this day. It's a reason why I'm reading all of this, people. Now, you're going to see something start to happen. God gave them instructions to rid the land of the people. It's a reason why he tells that. Now, in the Old Testament, God tells, does say you can house strangers. But if you house strangers in the land, they're supposed to take on our customs. Just like if somebody comes from China. If we are one nation under God, if somebody comes from China, and choose to dwell in our land. They're supposed to go by our laws and our custom and our God. We're not supposed to let them bring their God into our habitation. Just keep that in your mind. And the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel. And the Lord was with them. And the house of Joseph sent to describe Bethel. To describe the Bethel. Now the name of the city before was Luz. And the spies saw a man come forth out of the city. And they said unto him, Show us, we pray thee, the entrance to the city, and we will show thee mercy. And when he showed them the entrance to the city, they smote the city with the edge of the sword. But they let, the go, let go the man and his family. And the man went into the land of the Hittites, and built a city, and called the name thereof Luz, which is the name thereof unto this day. None of them must drive out the inhabitants of Beth, Bethshin, and her towns, nor Tadak. And her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor, and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Ablin, and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo, and her towns. But the Canaanites would dwell in the land. Pay attention to what's going on. It's good to be merciful. It really is good. But God tells us certain things that's a warning to us. Because all these people that are letting dwell in their land and letting do their things, guess what? The problem is building up. Look at America. It's building up. And it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites, the dwelt in Gazar. But the Canaanites dwelt in Gazar among them. Neither did the Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahalalon. But the Canaanites dwelt among them and became tributaries. 
Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Akko, nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor Allah, nor Askzib, nor of Helba, nor of Afik, nor of Rehob. But the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth Anath, but he dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Beth Anath became tributaries unto them. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountain, for they would not suffer them to come down to the valley. But the Amorites would dwell in Mount Harris and Aijalon and in Shalmi, yet the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed, so that they became tributaries. And the coast of Amorites was from the going up to Akrabim, from the rock and upward. So God gave instruction to the children of Israel when they came into a, a new land, a land that he promised to them, to drive out the inhabitants. And again, like I said, if the people chose to dwell with you, they're supposed to become a part of you. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's go back a little bit. Not you of them. Let's read from Leviticus chapter 33. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, you shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. Now think about that, as one born among you. Read between the lines. Thou shalt love him as thyself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, and meteor in weight unmeasured. Just balance, just weights, a just effort, and a just hand shall you have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe all my statutes and all my judgments, and do them. I am the Lord. Just think about it. Read between the lines now. Yes, you're supposed to treat people the same. But we don't supposed to let them set up their gods in the land. Let's go over to Deuteronomy. During Moses' time. Let's read from chapter 32, starting from again. Give ear, O you heavens, and I will speak and hear. It's the song of Moses. The words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, and my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe you greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and wisdom. Think about it. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth, without inequity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people, and unwise? Is not he that he thy father that have bought thee? Have he not made thee and established thee? <clears throat> Hold on, I'm trying to sneeze here. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy fathers, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of children of Israel. For the Lord's, Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in a waste howling wilderness. He led him about and instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttered over her young, spread abroad her wings, taketh them, bareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him. And there was no strange God with him. Now think about that. What is a stranger and really... It's about God. Because when somebody accepts God, they're no longer a stranger. They're getting grafted in. So what's a stranger for real? So, so, so the Lord him alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high place of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, 
and all out of the flint rock, butter of kine and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the bread of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the great. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Now, pay attention. It seems like when nations get, or people, nations, they get super blessed by the Lord, prosperity wise, it seems like they do something. They get slack. They turn away from God. They let people come in and do what they want. Because God is watching over them. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed him to devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your father feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art mindful, unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he rewarded them because of the provoking of his sons and his daughters. Mm. I'm going to stop this. You're going to read the rest. You're going to read it yourself. But you got to understand when you start letting people set up their religious worship in the temples and all this stuff in the land, you're defiling the land. And the thing is, God lets it go on. But have you read the New Testament? Revelations? Scary, ain't it? Let's read chapter 2 of Judges. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bacham and said, I made you to go out, go up out of Egypt, and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Why does God want you to throw down their altars? Because if you don't, you're letting de devils dwell in the land. Look at this land we live in. Everybody believe in their own God and this and that. You know, people I was watching. <laughs> oh, Lord, I tried anyway. I tried to watch The Exorcist the other day. Mm. The new one. I was like, let's see what they got going on here. Let's see what's up. And I remember they had one of the women from the old. If it's a spoiler, I don't care. It's, don't matter. But anyway, the old test, the old exorcist was about Christian men, a Catholic, trying to exorcise a demon. Now this new one is like there are other gods, and this and that, and, and they were showing a scene when a woman from the old testament. I think it's the mother of the woman who was possessed from the old exorcist. I said old testament. From the old exorcist, she was in it. And she was like, I cast you out. And every holy being, I'm like, wow. Shortly after that, her eyes got plucked out. And me, I'm going straight to, to the spirit. I'm like, hey, she should have just stuck with the Jesus name. So I was like, let me keep watching this. I'm like, I see right now, they didn't change. They even changed those scary moves like God has no power. So I'm starting watching the dude going to different people, try to figure out, we just got to cast. There's been different ways to cast out demons and devils in the land and all this and that. And many different people have been doing exorcisms for years. Well, let's put it this way, people. They A lot of places are doing exorcisms and stuff for years because they bring them devils in they selves you understand what i'm saying our ways ain't their ways mm -hmm. we don't do what they do but anyway so the dude come in and he bringing this lady and she was like we're from africa and we bring the or whatever she's like our ancestors you ever heard of root magic i'm like whoa she was like whoa oh. he was like okay i'm gonna go he don't believe in god now he don't believe in jesus christ but he believe in this root magic this is how I'm going to save my daughter. You understand? That's what happens when you start bringing crazy stuff into the land. You're going to save, I'm going to save your daughter. So I'll fast forward. You, now you got Christians, you got these people, you got these people, all these people in one house trying to use multiple different magic sources 
to <laughs> exercise the demon. And the first thing I saw was this lady drawing the symbol on the TV, and I turned it off. I was like, you know what? It looked like somebody's trying to open up a doorway in my crib. So I was like, I saw what I needed to see. That's it. I'm done. I'm not watching this anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what world the world is trying to do. Their ways are right. Our ways are wrong. Let them do what they want to do. It's no problem. It's their prerogative. Let me tell you something, people. It is a problem. When you let all this go on in our land. You understand? It's crazy. It's crazy, people. Let me keep reading for a second. And you shall make no league with the happiness of this land. You shall throw down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Why have you done this? Why are you setting up all this stuff in America? This is supposed to be one nation under God. But I'm not even going to history lessons. You like we always been a one nation under God's. Mm. But let's keep re re reading. Wherefore I also said I would not drive them out from before you. <laughs> but they shall be as thorns in your sides. And their God shall be a snare unto you. Hmm. Why God won't just clean the land? Faith without works is dead. What we need to be doing as men and women of God instead of people pleasers. And we wonder why all this stuff is running rapid. Adultery, different types of sex, and this type of movement, that movement, that movement. We brought all this spiritual energy into this land that's supposed to have been cleansed. Think about it. The Native Americans had their way of worship. And I'm just going to, you got to know the old and understand the new. And God sent some people over here to cleanse the land from the Native American ways. But we kept inhabitants around. We sure did. But I think all things work together for those that love God or call to come to purpose. Because the thing is, some of these Native Americans that live here had given their life over to Christ. If you read the Bible, there's always a remnant. Because you're like, why does he fight against the Canaanites so much? Because he even leaves remnants of them. For them to transform and this and that. Let's read that again, chapter. Let's read that again. And I'm going to pause for a second. Starting with chapter 2 from the jump. And the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Gabakim and said, I made you to go out of Egypt and I brought you into the land which I swear unto your father. And I said, I would never break my covenant with you. And you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore, I also said I would not drive them out from before you. But they shall be as thorns in your sides, and that God shall be a snare to you. And it came to pass, when the angel of the Lord spake these words to the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of the place Baca. And they sacrificed unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man into his inheritance and possessed the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of elders and outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the servant of the nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Harris, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gosh. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation. After them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Now, let's go back. That's why you need to teach your kids. That's why you need to teach the next generation. You can't just hide this for yourself. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served barley. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were formed about them, and bowed themselves unto them. And provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about. So they could no longer any longer stand before their enemies. With so they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord had said and as the Lord had sworn it to them. And they were greatly distressed nevertheless the lord raised up judges 
which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. Let me pause and I will continue.